If you're looking to digitalize some of your slide film, whether it be 35mm slide film, medium format slide film, or large format slide film, then this is the video for you. In today's video, I'm going to show you quickly how I digitize my slide film using my flatbed scanner so I can get it into my computer and edit it in Lightroom or Photoshop. Before I do that, I just want to say quickly, I know it's challenging times out there in the world right now with this whole coronavirus thing, so I hope you're all staying safe and you're all in lockdown in your own little bubble and I understand that's challenging so hopefully today's video will give you some inspiration to perhaps dig out some of your old slide film and go through the process of digitalizing it into your computer if you're lucky enough to have the tools to be able to do that. So before I get into how I actually digitalize my slide film I just want to quickly explain there's two options out there for you to consider if you want to do this and the first option is that you send it off to a lab possibly the same lab that develops your film and they will digitalize it for you and the second option is to do it yourself at home. If you send it off to a lab they will normally use their generic scanning machine which is a Noritsu or a Fujifilm machine which will give you good results but the only thing that I will say is that you're giving up some control of how your image will look because they will edit it for you and the second option is a drum scanning machine. Not all labs have them but some of them do and that's arguably the best type of scanning that you can do but it's so good that it comes with a price because of the time involved in actually mounting the slide film onto the drum machine but it gives the best results so those are the two options if you want to get somebody else to do it for you now the second option is that you do it yourself and there's two ways you can do that the first one is using a flatbed scanner like I'm going to show you today and you scan it into your computer with a piece of software or you can use a DSLR and a light table like this to take images of the slide film and digitalize it onto your camera and then just put your SD card into your computer and drag it and drop it in like you would normally. Now the only thing I would say with doing scanning with a DSLR and slide film is that I've tried that and I've really struggled to get good results and what I can do is recommend a review that Nick Carver did where he compared flatbed scanning to DSLR scanning to drum scanning and that was a great review and I'll put a link up to that in the, in the video and please check that out because that's the best comparison review I've ever seen. Yeah so those are the options and today we're going to get into scanning with a flatbed scanner. So now we're going to get into how I actually scan my film. But before I do that there's a couple of things that we need. The first one obviously is a computer. The second one is a flatbed scanner like the one I've got which is an Epson V800 Perfection Scanner. You're going to need a rocket blower. Now when you're scanning at home, the worst nightmare, the worst thing is getting dust on your slide film and it's just the management of dust with scanning film at home is a complete nightmare. So the best thing you can get is a good heavy duty rocket blower like this one and I'll leave a link in my video to where you can buy these from so that's a must have if you're going to do this. The next thing you're going to need, but again not important but useful, is some tweezers. And you can pick these up at your local art store. They're good just for handling the film so that you don't have to touch it with your fingers. And the other thing that you need is a pair of cotton gloves. Now these, again, they're not essential, but there's nothing worse than having to pick a slide film up because you've dropped it on the floor or on your desk. And the only way you can do that is by touching it with your fingers and you get fingerprints all over the slide film. So it's, it's handy wearing these. So the first step is you've got to obviously pick some film and then load it into the scanner holder, the film holder for the scanner. So we're going to do that now quickly and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so this is my Epson V800 Perfection Scanner. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link down below as to where you can view and purchase this if you want to do so. But what I will say just quickly, in terms of the management of dust, if you do have a scanner or you're thinking about buying one, I highly recommend that you buy a dust cover. And what you do is you obviously put the dust cover on when you're not using it. But what you also do is you leave your film holders underneath the dust cover at all time. And that just helps to keep the dust off your film covers and off your film. So now we have our slide film holder. This is the medium format film holder for the Epson V800. It's an excellent holder. It's very stiff. And yeah, so we're going to use that. And the next thing is to pick some film to scan. 
So this is how I store my film. It's basically just an A4 ring binder that keeps it safe and protected. And I have these plastic wallets that are made by Printfile. And these plastic wallets are excellent. They're archival grade, so there's no acid in them whatsoever, so they're not going to damage your slide film. And I will leave a link to these in the in the comment section below for you to check those out because they're well worth getting if you've got some slide film. So the light table just helps me to pick an image and it also gives a true representation of what the image starts to look like once we've finished. So I've got a few here to look at and yeah I think we're going to go with this one. So now we're going to load it up. First thing we do is get the gloves on. And then we open up the scanner. And now we just give it a blow to get any dust off there. So once we've done that, we get the film out. So just lay the film in there. I just spend a bit of time here now just making sure that it's lined up correctly. It's a bit fiddly. But it's worth just taking a bit of time just to line it up correctly just to make sure that you're not cutting out any of, of the edges of your film when you put this down because this will encroach on the actual image. That's it, then we just close that down. Lock it in place. Give it a final, final blow. I always blow the back. And then that's it, it's ready to go into the scanner. And then what I normally do before I actually put the put the slide film in there, I just go through and give it a bit of a clean. That's it. Next thing we do is drop in the slide holder. I don't know if you can see here, there's actually height adjusters here. So there's different settings for that. What I'll probably do is a separate video on how to optimize the height for this holder in this scanner. But for now, just take it that I've already done that and this is the best setting for my scanner. And then we'll jump into the computer. Okay, so now we're in the computer. And as you can see here, we've got Silverfast Studio open. Now, if you haven't got this software, I'll leave a link down below for where you can go and find this piece of software. You have to purchase it, it's a one-off purchase, but I highly recommend this software for when you're scanning either black and white, negative, or slide film like we are doing today. So the first thing to mention, if you're scanning slide film, then it's quite important that we calibrate the scanner to the film that we're using and as you can see on my screen here i've already done this if you want to watch a video on how i actually do that then i'll leave a link up in the video for you to see that so the first thing we do is we come over to the left hand side and this is where we find all the editing tools and the first one here is what is the file name what is the file format how big is the file going to be and where we're going to save it so the first thing i'm going to change is the file name so i'll just put the name of where i took the image and the type of film that i use which is velvia 50. so it's going to my desktop Save it there, want it in a TIFF file format, or oh, there's other options there if you want to use those. In terms of the quality, 300 pixel per inch. The file size is 102 megabytes. Now, I generally wouldn't go any higher than that. You could potentially go up to 3,200 pixel per inch, but uh, again, I wouldn't recommend it. I don't really think you get any benefit from doing that, and all you're really doing is pretty much doubling the size of the file. So I'd just leave that at 2,400 pixels per inch, and that gives me great results. So the next one down is the densimeter. Now the only thing I do here is make sure that the color depth is on 16 bit. So once we've done that, the first thing we do is go ahead and do a pre-scan, which is up here on the top part of the toolbar. Um, it takes some time to do this, so I'm gonna fast forward this part. 
So that's the pre-scan done and as you can see the images are upside down and that's okay. We just go ahead and line up the scan area to the image. This is the one that we're going to scan today and then all we do is come up here and rotate the images around. So once we've done that we just go ahead and zoom in and this time it's going to do a more detailed scan and again I'll fast forward this part. So that's the more detailed scan done and as you can see it's looking quite dark and that's okay that's pretty normal now we've got a more detailed scan we can go ahead and start editing the image so the first thing that i do is i come down to the histogram this is where the majority of the editing is done in the actual histogram so what i do first is i set the the white point and the black point so we'll go ahead and set the white point first and as you'll see the image will start to brighten and as i'm doing this you can see on the top here there's a more detailed view of the histogram and what we've got to be careful here is that we don't clip any highlights so you only really want to just go just in just just so that the the edge of the histogram is nearly at the end and I, I wouldn't go any further than that and then it's the same with the black only requires a small amount on this image and then the next bit to adjust is the midtone you either go to the right with this or to the left depending on how you like your image and we're getting into personal taste now here we're with adjusting the midtone I like to brighten my midtones up a little bit but what I don't want to do is lose any of that pink hue in the sky and what we've got to remember as well is is that this is a global adjustment so we want to get it as close as we can to where we expect it to be but with a view of editing it further locally in either Lightroom or Photoshop. So I think that looks about good. Now I've just noticed that my edges aren't quite straight so we'll go in and adjust those making sure that there's no black border from the film carried over. That looks good. So once we're happy with our highlights and our shadows and we've edited our midtones and we're happy with those the next step in Silverfast is to go ahead and add a sharpening mask or in other words in Silverfast that's called an unsharp mask by pressing this icon here and as you will see the tool will pop up in the tool bar and then the next feature we want to utilize is the scratch and dust removal tool by clicking on this icon here which uses an infrared feature of the flatbed scanner to go through and detect any dust or scratch and remove it automatically in a minute we're going to set these off but before I do that I just want to draw your eye to the sky in my image and as you can see here and here there's some dust and there's a light scratch or some sort of hair here and something here so if the the software does its job then they will be removed automatically so what we're going to do now is here we're going to click on a, a high quality scan and the software will start to do its thing this will take some time so again I'm going to fast forward this part and that's it the software has worked its magic and if we go up and check in the sky now hopefully oh you can see something there very faintly those spots of dust and those little hairs or scratches or whatever they were they have gone which is excellent so the other thing to mention with the sharpening tool is that I always leave it on auto sharpen I leave the radius on 2 and the power on 220 although you can adjust these if you want to the only other thing that I would change is the threshold I usually bring this up slightly to about 5 because I don't want to sharpen any grain and in terms of the scratch and dust removal tool that's fully automatic so that's it we now just go ahead and press scan and it will scan again and then process the file and it will export a tiff file to my desktop and from there we can then transport it into lightroom or photoshop or whatever image editing tool that you use so here we are in my desktop and as you can see silverfast has exported my image as a tiff file and it's given the name that i gave it and we can go ahead and preview this image and as you can see it's done a, a great job beautiful morning in Rangipo Desert here in New Zealand where I was photographing Mount Narihoe here which is a volcano uh, quite often go here and this is a, a beautiful morning really happy with how Fujifilm Velvia 50 has rendered this scene in terms of the subtle tones in, in the sky and the beautiful yellow tones of these bushes in the foreground and if we zoom in here we can see typical Velvia 50 grain and there's not much dust I, I do see that there's a little speck here but that's okay because we can just spot removal that in in Lightroom or Photoshop overall a fantastic image and I will definitely be keeping this and put it in my portfolio 
and I think Silverfast has done a fantastic job of editing it for the first initial edit and also with the dust removal. So that's it. You now have all the skills and knowledge you need to be able to scan your slide film. And that's it for today's video. Brings us to a conclusion and I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to see any of the equipment or tools that I used in creating this video then please check out the description below where I'll leave links to where you can you can see those and yeah thank you for tuning in um, I hope you enjoyed it please leave me a comment and subscribe to my channel hit the thumbs up and yeah see you next time bye for now